this computer right here was my PC in 2007. Sort of. It has seen better days. This PC has been my PC throughout the start of high school until about 2010 or 2011 when I started building my own bigger custom built PC. But then it was passed along to some family and spent, you know, even after years of it being in my floor and being my wife's PC, my girlfriend at the time, in our floor for my second PC, it was my Linux box at one point. Then it got passed along to family to been, then be used in a house that was full of pets and smoke and the like. It's not been taken too fondly care of, even though I have replaced the power supply in it at one point. But we're going to be upgrading it with the GPU that I actually upgraded this computer with in 2007 or 2008 with the sole purpose of playing Halo 2, even though that never really happened until years later. And that GPU is... what's this doing here? This one right here. This is the BFG Tech. I still have the BFG sticker on the front of this bad boy. NVIDIA GeForce 9800 GT. I was still fairly clueless about PC parts at the time. I still, you know, didn't exactly know what I was doing. And I went to Best Buy and asked the Geek Squad member it, what graphics card I would need to play Halo 2. They couldn't tell me. I found this one on the shelf within and said, hey, will this let me play Halo 2? They still couldn't tell me, but I picked it up and upgraded it. And I have fond memories of using this card uh, to play Dead Space, Borderlands, Combat Arms, uh, Call of Duty 4, Counter-Strike Source, as well as using it as my PhysX card paired with a NVIDIA GTX 660. I am stoked to get this bad boy installed in the system and see what else we have going on. Unfortunately, however, this is going to require some TLC. So this is an Acer Aspire desktop. The story behind this is that I had a fairly custom built, I guess at this point, eMachines desktop with a Hot Wheels CRT monitor that I had checkerboarded on my own because I used to have the full Hot Wheels PC stuff. Unfortunately, we got rid of all of that. Eventually, I had gotten a bunch of old desktops from grandparents and things like that and had gotten fed up with it and I thought I could combine them somehow or use the parts from them to make one of them faster. Again, I was trying to learn computer hardware but did not know much about it. And I spread out all the parts on my floor, which was carpet, and tried to build something and just couldn't get anything to work. And so a colleague of my mom's, who was really good with computers at the time, helped me put them together and he built us a proper desktop in the eMachines case that would actually run games and gave me a copy of Tony Hawk Pro Skater. And it served me well and I was so proud of that computer and loved it so much. Uh, but I gave it the upgrade to Windows Vista and that just killed it because it only had 512 megs or maybe a gig of RAM. Vista was super RAM heavy and ran slow on everything not built for it pretty much and even a lot of stuff built for it. Like, I dealt with the slowness because it was my computer, it was awesome, it was in my room, I didn't care. Uh, but at some point my mom needed to use it for something, to like print off something or what have you, and got so fed up with how slow it is that while I was in class, again, my freshman year of high school, she went in and bought me this, and it came with a monitor and speakers, and the monitor was a 1440 by 900 LCD, and we got rid of the CRT, unfortunately, and the eMachines computer for this. And... It was pretty neat. It ran Windows Vista right out of the box. It had an AMD Athlon processor and it didn't have any onboard graphics. So then I had to go upgrade graphics later, but it served me quite well for a while. Unfortunately, I think we're gonna be a little horrified when we pop off. I don't even have the thumb screws in this. We're just gonna slide off the side panel. You can already see it's stained up anyway. Oh boy, that is terrifying. So I don't know how well you can see this with the light. That gunk ain't gray, that is brown. That is smoker's dust, which is some of the worst dust you can get inside of your computer. And it is filthy and disgusting. So we are going to do, <laughs> even breathing it in sucks. So we are gonna get this computer cleaned up. Uh, we're gonna dust out this graphics card and do some peels on it because it's got some dust of its own in there. And we're gonna hopefully get this reinstalled back to its former glory and see what we can manage in terms of getting it running again. And we're gonna run some, some games on it that would have been appropriate for 2007 if they were available on PC in 2007. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's an LG TV tuner card installed in here. It has S-Video, antenna connections, and RCA audio. We might have to play around with that too.
Sorry to interrupt the rocking out to the awesome backing track music, but I wanted to tell you that an extended version of this video is available on my own streaming site, where I have partnered with some of my creator friends to build our own platform where we don't have to worry about crazy YouTube algorithm things or anything like that. My videos are higher quality there, ad-free, and often extended from the YouTube versions just like this one. The site is called Nebula, and we've partnered with CuriosityStream. Nebula features YouTube's top education creators, such as Legal Eagle, Thomas Frank, and Low Spec Gamer. CuriosityStream saw what we were doing for educational content and wanted to partner up. We've worked out a deal where if you sign up with the link below, you not only get access to CuriosityStream and their library of thousands of educational and documentary content, but you get access to Nebula for free for the entire duration of your subscription to CuriosityStream. For a limited time, CuriosityStream is offering 26% off of their annual plan, making it less than $15 per year for both CS and Nebula. While you're there, check out Meet the Avatars, a very interesting dive into the prospect of effectively reviving dead people into animated, you know, electronic avatars or spending time with them in virtual reality and the ethics and the weird, you know, ness that we'll have to deal with that comes along with such a crazy technological advancement. Head on over to curiositystream.com slash epos for the best deal in streaming and get access to both sites for under $15 per year. All right, I did what I could to clean this up and I had honestly almost given up on the CPU cooler and had just about added a Hyper 212 Evo to my card when I finally got it clean and usable, assuming the fan even works. We're gonna see if this thing boots. I'm a little iffy on the power supply. In fact, I couldn't use the 9800 GT that I bought because it requires a six pin PCIe power connector, which this power supply does not have. And I'm sure somewhere in my mess of cables, I have a Molex to PCIe power, but those never end well. But what's funny is this card that I bought that requires more power, I guess, because of the higher overclock on the card, only has 512 megs of VRAM, whereas my card that I actually had from back in the day has a gig. So we're gonna go with this one, assuming that VRAM is more important these days, and we're gonna see if we get a boot out of this thing, because I don't know that we will. Power just went out to my entire studio. Holy sh! I just nuked my entire studio. I hope the power supply is it. So we're gonna try this one more time with that UPS off. I'm kind of scared. Oh, I don't even have it plugged in now. I yanked that cord out. Let's give it one more go. Power supply is powered on. We didn't even get to the point of pressing the power button last time. It was just that draw from the PSU. All right, here we go. Oh, that's a gnarly sound. I don't even know which of the fans is doing that one. The hard drive is just going Actually, that might be the floppy drive. I forgot there's a floppy drive in there. Are we gonna get any post? I might have to do VGA out, VGA out on the motherboard. There's obviously no debug LEDs or post lights on here. Let's try VGA out with no GPU. Now it won't even power on. What gives? What? Now it doesn't even turn on. Hello? We can try another power supply. I think as they say, third time's the charm. Okay, so that fan sound was not the power supply. Got video out straight from the motherboard, working power supply. Still nothing. All right, what if we go back to the graphics card? Also now won't come back on, that's so bizarre. Fly on. Let's see if we can get this to post.
Give me post or give me death. This is what I ran into with the power button and why I pulled it out because I thought there was a short in the case or something. Once you turn it off, it doesn't come back on until you power cycle it. Super weird. The fan spins for a second and then it just goes back off. I think I killed it even more somehow. Hello? I don't see anything wrong with it, like, visually. I don't see any, like, exploded capacitors. <sighs> any obvious scenario where there's something stuck in it that could, like, be shorting it. <sighs> like, it's still a little dusty, but not enough that I would consider it to be a problem. I might have to reseat the CPU, maybe? Oh, there is a PC speaker on it, so we're not even getting, like, system beeps. Alright, screw it. Let's... Reseat the CPU, I guess. This is stupid. Nope, not a bent pin to be found. Socket looks clean. I don't know that this has ever been removed. Yeah, that should all be fine and dandy, but we have reseated it regardless. I don't see any of the little surface mount caps like ripped off or anything that I can tell. Like there could be one down there. I don't know how it would have happened if that's what that is, so I doubt that's what that is. I'm just gonna leave it for a few and see if it ever posts. Maybe I'm not patient enough. I got thermal grease on my hands. I think I have to call it here. Sometimes projects just don't work out. I'm not getting any amount of feedback from the motherboard whatsoever. I'm not getting a system beep. I'm not getting a post. It won't even power up more than twice in a row with, or more than once in a row without me restart, you know, power cycling it. I think the motherboard's just fried somehow. I don't know how. And since it appears I'm not the last one to have taken this apart, who knows? I just assumed with some basic stuff, it would be bootable again. But I don't see any obvious physical damage on the board. I don't see any reason it should be dead other than Maybe the old ESD got to it when someone messed with it, or maybe even me. I don't, I, re I really don't know at this point. So I'm gonna keep this around a little while as I post this project, uh, just in case anyone has some bizarre ideas for me to try. Otherwise, we're just gonna call it quits for this. And I think I'm going to look into building up a different Windows 7, or Windows, a different 2000 Sarah. And I guess I'm just gonna look into building up a different, uh, 2007 era gaming PC because pretty disappointing. This was my high school rig at least for the first half of high school I was hoping to get it going again Thanks for watching if you want to see more videos preferably not like this uh, check the links in the video description hit the like button subscribe for more tech education and stream guides I'll see you next time